The first thing you notice isn't a sound, it's a feeling, a gentle, almost imperceptible sway that reminds you you're not on solid ground. Then your eyes open, not to a suburban street or a cityscape, but to an endless shimmering expanse of blue. The sun glints off the water, a blindingly beautiful sight, a perfectly curved horizon in every direction. You're surrounded, not by neighbors or traffic, but by the vast, indifferent ocean. This isn't a cruise ship vacation, this is home. Your home is a massive, intricate structure of steel pipes, platforms standing on colossal legs plunged into the seabed. Most people see industrial work sites, temporary homes for tough people doing tough jobs, but what if we looked at them differently? Think of these feats not just as extraction sites but as blueprints for a new kind of human settlement. It sounds like science fiction. Stick with me. So let's get down to the dirty jobs of living on a floating city. First up, water. You can't exactly run a pipe to the municipal supply out here. You're surrounded by water but you can't drink a drop of it. The solution is a process called desalination. These rigs are equipped with systems that take in seawater, force it through membranes in a process called reverse osmosis, reverse osmosis water purification system, stripping out salt and impurities. What's left is pure fresh drinking water. It's a power-hungry process, but it's the only way to keep hundreds of people hydrated in the middle of nowhere. It's a modern miracle of plumbing we take for granted on land. Next on the list is food. There's no grocery delivery service this far out. Every single meal from the bacon and eggs at breakfast to the steak for dinner has to be planned weeks in advance. Huge shipments of frozen goods, canned goods, dry goods arrive on supply boats. The logistics are mind-boggling. The galley chefs on these rigs are unsung heroes, tasked with feeding a small army multiple times a day, every day. But for a permanent city, you'd have to get more creative. Imagine sections of the rig converted into high-tech vertical farms, hydroponic systems growing vegetables, aeroponic systems growing herbs, even fruits under powerful LED lights, regardless of the weather outside. Then there's power and waste, the two things no city can live without or with too much of. Most rigs generate their own electricity, often using massive diesel turbines, natural gas turbines, the very resources they're drilling for. But a future rig city could be a model of sustainable energy. Imagine platforms covered in solar panels, legs adorned with turbines, capturing the immense power of ocean currents and waves. As for waste, everything must be managed meticulously. Incinerators can handle a lot of the solid waste. Advanced wastewater treatment systems clean every drop before it's returned often cleaner than the water in some coastal cities. Of course, the biggest challenge is Mother Nature herself. These rigs are built to withstand 100-foot waves and hurricane-force winds, but it's a terrifying experience all the same. During a major storm the entire structure groans and shudders, a constant reminder of the ocean's raw power. Safety is an obsession. Drills for fires, abandoned ship scenarios, medical emergencies are a constant part of life. Living here means accepting that nature is unquestionably in charge, and your well-being depends on the engineering beneath your feet and the training of the people beside you. We're building cities in the desert, carving communities into mountainsides, so why not build them on the water? These rigs are already here, marvels of self-sufficiency. The foundation is literally already in place. Living here means trading your backyard for a 360-degree ocean view. Your morning commute, an elevator ride or a walk across a steel catwalk with salty spray on your face. Birds chirping replaced by the cry of gulls and the low hum of machinery. It's a world away from the life most of us know. Let's be honest, living in a steel box in the middle of the ocean can get lonely. The biggest challenge might not be the engineering but the psychology. On a working rig, crews are away from their families for weeks or months at a time. The isolation is real. You miss birthdays, anniversaries, the simple comfort of being with loved ones. For an oil rig to become a true city, it would need to house not just workers but families. This changes everything. It means creating a space that isn't just functional, but nurturing. A place where you can build a life, not just do a job. Suddenly, the needs multiply. You don't just need a bunkhouse, you need apartments. You don't just need a mess hall. You need places where families can cook their own meals. You'd need a school for the kids maybe with a curriculum focused on marine biology and engineering taught right there in the ultimate hands-on environment. You'd need a clinic that could handle everything from a common cold to a broken arm, staffed with doctors, staffed with nurses, who chose this life. The entire focus would have to shift from temporary housing to permanent community building. The human element becomes the most important part of the design. 
So, how do you turn a utilitarian structure into a place with a soul? Well, it starts with personalization. Just think about the difference between a sterile hotel room and your own bedroom. It's the pictures on the wall, the books on the shelf, and all those little things that say, this is mine. A rig city would, you know, really need to allow for that. Apartments would have to be customizable with space for personal belongings that make a dwelling feel like a home. Maybe small container garden balconies could be designed letting residents grow their own flowers or herbs, a little patch of green amidst the blue and gray of the ocean and steel. Then you have to think about the economy of this new city. It can't just be about the rig's primary function. You'd have a whole ecosystem of jobs springing up, teachers, doctors, and chefs, of course. But what about a barber or a fitness instructor? Maybe even a technician who specializes in maintaining the hydroponic farms, artisans and craftspeople, creating art inspired by their unique environment. This internal economy would create a sense of purpose beyond a single industry, making the community more resilient, diverse and interesting. It would become a place where people don't just live, but where they can build careers and contribute in a multitude of ways. Recreation would be a huge part of community building. Fishing off the lower decks would probably be some of the best in the world. You could have a designated, netted off ocean pool for safe swimming. Scuba diving clubs could explore the incredible marine life that congregates around the rig's underwater structures, which often become thriving artificial reefs. Just imagine community-wide events, movie nights under the stars on a clear night, chili cook-offs in the main galley, or even celebrating holidays with unique rig-centric traditions. These shared experiences are really the glue that holds a community together. Ultimately, a rig city would be like any small town, just with a very different foundation. It would have its own rhythms, its own inside jokes, and its own unique challenges and triumphs. People would form councils to make decisions about community life. They'd look out for each other's kids. They would come together to celebrate and to support one another during tough times, like a big storm rolling in. It wouldn't just be a collection of individuals living in the same place. It would be a true community, forged by shared circumstances and a shared reliance on one another, standing together against the vastness of the sea. And let's not forget about staying connected to the world. High-speed satellite internet is already a reality on modern rigs and it would be the umbilical cord for a permanent settlement. It would allow for video calls with grandparents back on land, remote work opportunities for spouses, access to entertainment and information. It would bridge the gap of physical isolation ensuring that while you're living in a world apart, you're not cut off from it. This connection would be crucial in making the rig feel less like a remote outpost and more like a unique but connected part of the global village. When you boil it all down, living on an oil rig city is a fascinating trade-off. On one hand, you have the ultimate escape. You're free from traffic jams, noisy neighbors, the relentless pace of modern urban life. Your front yard is a dynamic, ever-changing seascape. Few people will ever get to experience it so intimately. You live in a tight-knit community, people genuinely rely on one another, a throwback to when knowing your neighbor was a necessity. You're living on the cutting edge of human ingenuity, a pioneer of a new settlement. On the other hand, you're giving up a lot of freedom. You can't just decide to go for a drive or go for a hike in the woods. Your world is confined to the few acres of steel you live on. You're subject to rules and regulations to keep everyone safe working in a potentially hazardous environment. And you are always, always aware of your isolation and your dependence on the technology that keeps your metal island afloat and alive. It's a life of profound beauty and profound constraints. Think about your life right now. Maybe you live in a city apartment. You're surrounded by millions of people, yet you might not even know the person on the other side of your wall. You have endless choices for food, entertainment, shopping, but you also deal with noise, pollution, and stress. Life on a rig would be the opposite. Your choices would be limited, but your connection to community and environment would be incredibly deep. It's a choice between boundless, anonymous freedom and constrained, meaningful connection. So, could you do it? Trade your lawnmower for a life jacket? Trade your daily commute for a walk across a catwalk high above the waves? Could you find home and happiness surrounded by water and sky? There's no right or wrong answer. It's fascinating to think about. These steel islands might be more than a place to do a dirty job. They might be the blueprint for cities of tomorrow. Would you sign up?